Hello and welcome to another episode of Muso Monday. I am your host, Mika Kara Zorel, and with us we have the official Muso Monday mascot. She's the only pineapple flavored mascot, and she always cuts her nails before a date. It is the one and only Sankyu-san. How are you guys today? Dara Mirshan says, of course, when having a chance, might as well, in response to, ah yes, entering the raffle in four different languages. Uh, what you're looking at in the background is a playthrough of Sango Fighter 2, which was one of the first Romance of the Free Kingdoms related fighting games. The first game came out on the arcade, and also MS DOS. Same thing for this one that we're looking at right now, where we find the hero, Zhao Yun, doing an arcade mode playthrough, I believe, versus the Wu King, Sun Tzu. The first game did not feature any characters from the Wu Kingdom at all, it was just basically the five tiger generals of Su. Not even led by Liu Bei, because he was a background character. And on the other side, you had Cao Cao and his cohorts from Wei. So, uh, I'm just gonna let that play in the background. It's uh, one of the games that I found on my little Super Console X imported from China. Uh, or rather, the Game Gear port of the same game, which is supposed to be the third game in the series, though it's actually quite a downgrade compared to the original. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna chat for a little bit, we don't need to hurry. I have a... I have been, uh... Haven't been around the internet much this weekend because I've been busy being in Denmark going on a little uh, shopping tour. Uh, I visited the uh, probably famous shopping district in Copenhagen called Straget. And in Straget, if you're ever visiting, uh, there is a shop, uh, actually more than one shop, it's several shops that go under the same moniker called Aros Cigarer, which is in, uh, Danish for um, the Cigars of Pharaoh. It is a series of several stores each specializing in one aspect of nerd culture. I visited all but one of these, but including um, all of them would have included uh, the uh, comics version of Pharaoh's Cigar, which has a wall-to-wall -wall Western comics and I mean all the comics, wall to wall, DC Comics, Image Comics, Marvel Comics, European Comics, Belgian Comics, French Comics, Nordic Comics, and so on. Our Mirshan says, follow the gala is awesome, ah yes. I haven't actually been because of the pandemic. It was hard to get to the other side of the straits. And last time I went, I was only aware of one of these, which is the one I just described. But I went with my mom, 
who had earlier gone with my sister, and they said that, no, that is just one of them. They also have a Faro Cigarro that sells anime and manga. All of it. We're talking wall-to-wall -wall mangas in every category and anime in every category. And I thought it was pretty interesting how if you were to look up hentai, you would actually look in the same aisle as the other mangas because they were listed in number of letter. So if you were to look for, say, bondage fairies, the straight up hentai, <laughs> hentai manga, you would find it close to Ber Sword of the Berserk or just Berserk because they would both be found under simply B. Leave it to the Danish to not be prudes. You look under the letter to find the thing that you want. H rating? They don't care. <laughs> also, hello, get serious. And the ad stops rolling when you say you <laughs> when you look up hentai. Yeah. So I'm talking about a chain of stores in Copenhagen on Ströget, the shopping district, and the manga store, which is entirely dedicated to manga and anime and nothing else, including movies, TV shows, uh, kids manga, adult manga. It's, that is literally all the store sells. And I found it interesting that they order everything by letter. So, if you want to find Bondage Fairies, the hentai, it will be on the same shelf as Berserk. Because they both start with a B. <laughs> it is as simple as that, because Danes are not prudes. <laughs> also, pretty cool Dan. Hello, hello. Welcome. Uh... The other stores they had was one entire store with movies and movie memorabilia. That store had so many items that they literally had a stair that you would put up against the wall so that you could climb to get the movie box that you wanted or perhaps that giant life-size alien figurine that was hanging from the ceiling. They also had an original copy of the 1970s line of the Millennium Falcon toy. That thing threw me off because I couldn't believe I was actually looking at the real thing. I thought those were you know, gone or destroyed because they were made out of really terrible, cheap, moldy plastic. But there it was, the 1970s toy Millennium Falcon, fully assembled in a glass box. Yet Celia says, wow, that reminds me of the same thing I heard about the big French comic book stores in France. Yeah, they also had one for Western comics. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, oh yeah, they also had one for board games. An entire store just for board games. Board games, card games, role-playing games. You could get all of the Pathfinder books if you wanted. You could get... Uh, all the way back to Dungeons and Dragons 3.0, all the way up to the latest, if you wanted to. If you asked for a monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons, they would ask you which one? <laughs> Version 2? 3? 3.5 perhaps? 4? 5? We have all of them. <laughs> and if you wanted to uh, ask for uh, Talisman, 
they would ask you, do you want Talisman the board game or one of the 50 plus expansions? You have to be a little more specific if we want, if you want to buy something from Talisman, because uh, we have a whole shelf with just expansions for this one board game. <laughs> the last store was cosplay. I actually didn't go into that one, but I saw outside that in the uh, window they had cosplay costumes for at least one of the Sailor Moon characters, Supergirl, and the entire Justice League, like just up in the window, but we never went. Trading cards, uh, they had Magic the Gathering cards. Uh, trading cards I wasn't actively looking for, I will admit. I was looking for the Warhammer stuff, and uh, once I found it, I realized that to get to the good shit, I would have to pull up a ladder, put it up against the uh, wall, and actually climb to get to the Chaos Codex that I was interested in. I never did that. Instead, I went back to the Western comic store that had the Spawn 1105 1,104 page compendium, five pounds, heaviest comic book I've ever held, and it was five pounds even though it's a TPB. It doesn't even have a hard cover. It was the soft cover version. <laughs> so that thing is heavier than the Bible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, one last thing. We're looking at the game Sango Fighter. You can actually get this game for free via Super Team's own website. There's even a Mugen remake that they themselves put together and are giving away for free. Just look for Sango Fighter or Super Team and you will find it. Free download. That includes Sango Fighter 1, Sango Fighter 2, and Sango Fighter Special Edition. We're currently looking at Sango Fighter 2. Pretty cool Dan says, very nice and then selling Warhammer. Well, I'm not that surprised considering Warhammer is developed by a UK company and I do live in Europe. So finding Warhammer stuff is actually not that hard compared to, say, finding American comics that don't cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> Let's see here. Now that I talked about what has been up and you've seen some gameplay of Sangolo Fighter, I figured maybe it's time to dive into the game and start doing some, some of this. We're gonna play a little game called Smash or Pass. And uh, I made sure that we have all of the officers available in one handy list. Unfortunately, the first few are gonna be spoiled because you can already see some of the names on there, but uh, this is the best I could do. <laughs> so are you guys ready? Feel free to put in the chat your choice, or and also why. We're gonna be talking a little bit about each character, how I think they would make be as a partner, and also whether it's a smash, or a pass. This is also totally not to piss off uh, Twitch, who <laughs> seems to take offense to these things. I don't personally believe that they give a single fuck 
about Smash or Pass streams, but we'll see. We will see. So if you guys are ready, we're gonna start out with none other than Jahu Dun. I have no idea why he is at the top of the list. But uh, here we go. Jahu Dun. Smash or pass? Okay, so Jahu Dun was a guy known for his frugal lifestyle. He was a scholar who refused to put his books down even during combat. He was so popular that he got embarrassed whenever they had a poll run about who was the best officer because he kept beating Cao Cao by a giant margin even though Cao Cao was his boss. He told his he later told his troops to stop doing that, but Cao Cao never punished him for it because he thought it was pretty funny. Anyway, uh... Smash, I think. Though I have some questions about this guy's hygiene, considering he's known for being very poor and being out in the field all the time. <laughs> General Tampicus has arrived to support Lurk. Oh, thank you, thank you. Let me uh, give the official Lurk message then. There we go. Are you guys pleased with that? Moving on. Oh. Dian Wei, another Wei officer. Dian Wei is a very, very good boy. A very good boy. But, uh, he's also kind of an idiot. Very loyal, but also pretty dumb. So, pass. This guy will sacrifice his life for you in the same way that a loyal puppy will attack a bear to save you. Uh, I could do with a better partner. Because I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Moving on. Sima E. Anybody who knows about Sima E knows that this guy is an absolute scumbag. Ruthless. Tyrant. Plotting. Evil. But... He is rather handsome and... He is... The worst nightmare only to his opponents when it comes to people that he decides he want to bang or his inner family like his kids and his wife he's very loyal and he's definitely the the best career man in the entire franchise smash Next up, we have Zhang Liao. Zhang Liao is a guy that had many different uh, bosses. He switched sides multiple times during the story. And the, the fact that he did that actually doesn't mean that he's a traitorous asshole. It actually just means that he was forced to. He had to find a new employer when Lu Bu betrayed them and killed his boss. And then when Cao Cao killed his new boss, Lu Bu, he had to switch sides again. Outside of that, the guy's actually very loyal and apparently really charming in conversation. So, smash. Moving on, we have the guy himself. The man, the Cao Cao, the hero of chaos. This guy has a secret fetish, which means he was very, 
very into sleeping with other people's wives. He was really into NTR mode. And it is rumored that Cao Pi, his son, was actually set up to be his favorite son specifically because he killed Zen Yi's former husband and took Zen Yi for himself. And Cao Cao, he liked that. So he would like curl his goatee beard a little and say, oh my god, yeah, that, that kid? I like him. I'm gonna put him in the first spot of the line of succession. So, pass, because it's Tao Tao. The guy's a dick. <laughs> Let's not get into the whole thing about how he murdered an entire family by accident because he's a haughty scumbag at times that does things without thinking. <laughs> Moving on, we have Zhou Yu, the smartest guy on the every battlefield, as long as Zhuge Liang is not there. This guy is loyal to his country, very loyal to his wife, and very macho in the way that he didn't like fighting as much as he liked one-upping his opponents by having a big brain. And I like that. Smash. Next, we have Lu Jun, the guy who is probably the most famous for setting up the plan that got the God of War killed, and also being almost entirely responsible for putting down Darth Vader Liu Bei, when he went on a sudden murder spree and burned half his army to death. He is also a character that has stories around him where Lu Jun is turned into a woman, which I guess makes him the closest, the closest you could possibly get to a trans person. Though Lu Jun wouldn't agree with that. Smash. Uh, I mean, I mean, Smash. Like, it, it's it's Sun Shang Zhang. I mean, if 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 you decide you don't want to smash, you. you you're, uh, you're, uh, you're either an ace, which is okay, or you're wrong. I'll say that. Next up, we have a Gan Ning. A Gan Ning is a pirate. He killed one of the Wu officers, a dad, and Trying to make amends, he botched that whole discussion by saying, Oh, I killed your dad. Well, I guess I did. I don't know what he looks like, uh, but I did kill like 50 guys of your troops over there. So I guess he was one of them. I couldn't tell. He didn't seem like all that remarkable. Oops, should I have said that? Pass. This guy is, uh, <laughs> he grows to be a better character later. He has a good arc, but he starts off being just a bandit. Sun Jian. Sun Jian, uh, he's the guy that started the Wu Empire, uh, or at least got the ball rolling. I would say smash, but do it quickly, because he doesn't stick around the plot for very long. He gets one mission done in most games before somebody gets a lucky hit on him with a with an arrow to the face. 
Depending on the scenario, it was uh, one of the way troops. Either way, heroic, but be quick about it. Mash. Next, we have cover boy Zhao Yun. I mean, this guy is. Uh, have you seen some of the stuff he does in the intro? This guy is uh, flexible. Like, just damn. <laughs> He's also got superhuman strength, speed, and endurance, and fighting capacity. Sadly, Zhao Yun is also the type of guy who would, even if you were to tell him you want to smash, he'll probably turn you down. So for Zhao Yun, smash, but he's probably going to say no. <laughs> Guan Yu, the god of war, you already know how I feel about this guy. Guan Yu is of course the guy that got Cao Cao really enamored with him. Like, really, really enamored with him. Tao Tao, despite being Liu Bei, Guan Yu's sworn brother, his nemesis, he was showering Guan Yu with gifts. He gave him uh, the fancy outfit that you see here. Uh, he got that from Tao Tao. And uh, he also got the red hair. A horse used by Lu Bu, because it was Cao Cao's to give away after he killed Lu Bu. So, uh, he's for Cao Cao specifically, I would say. Pass. Zhang Fei. Hard pass. This guy was... <clears throat> How do I put this? This guy kidnapped a woman and forced her to be his wife and she may have been a minor and he was a raging alcoholic. Pass. I know he's supposed to be a hero and fun loving goof but uh reading up on this guy he was a creep. Zhuge Liang hard smash this this man he is i mean it's Yuga Liang. the guy is super intelligent well spoken he uh has an ability to look past one's appearance we already know that and he has a way of uh, inventing fun machines so, uh, hard smash, yeah. Liu Bei. I get Celia says, by the way, I just got home. I'll send the pics of the other books. Sorry for the l delay. That is fine. I've been away for a while myself as I talked about being going to Denmark in the weekend. That is fine. Uh, so Liu Bei, uh, Liu Bei, not a huge fan of this guy. I mean, he's a good character and all, but he's also the Jesus figure of the story. Jesus figure of the story, and uh, he has his uh, Darth Vader moment at the end where he just abandons all of his principles and goes on a murder spree for revenge despite the efforts by all of his comrades to plead they plead with him to stop his nonsense but he doesn't listen and he gets himself killed in the process pass diao chan what does the chat think <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay, so 
The Alchon is a classical Black Widow. You take the bait, you go to jail, or in this case, you don't go to jail, you take the bait, the trap springs, and you fucking die. So, in any story involving the Alchon, she does not want to smash, or she only wants to smash if the smashing is done with a hammer to your face. She doesn't want to be with you, she wants you to die. <laughs> so, uh, you take the bait, you die. Pass. Lubu. Wow, uh... <laughs> Lubu. Lubu is portrayed as a gentleman. He really does care for Diao-chan. Uh, he is uh, portrayed as young and handsome. Um, pretty well spoken. Uh, very talented with weapons. But all he cares about outside of the Alchon is that he wants to be the best. The best there ever was, the best there ever will be. He does not have time to smash much. <laughs> uh, pass, because I don't want to get stabbed in the back. It's what he does. It's his whole thing. Juju. Pass. The guy is a friendly oaf who cares about farmers, but no, he doesn't have much going for him. He's poor, he is uh, not the brightest, his ambition level is very low. And that's it. Ass. Yahoo Yuan. The Master Archer himself. Possibly responsible for killing Zun Yan, depending on the version of the story. Also commands G.I. Joe troops that can uh, hide in snow, depending on the story. Gets killed pretty easily. Has a kid though, and he's a, a good dad. Hmm. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm gonna say smash, but be quick about it. This guy does not have longevity. <laughs> Chu Huang. Uh... This guy is very serious about training his job. I feel like I don't know enough. Let's see here. Xiu Huang is definitely best friend status. <laughs> best friend status. Yeah, like I don't mind him, but uh... Yeah, Slim is right. Also, welcome Slim. Okay, I'm gonna say pass. <laughs> Don't know if anyone could handle him. <laughs> Zhang He. Smash. This guy knows how to dress. This guy knows how to party. This guy knows how to have fun. Definitely smash. He is obviously a bit supposed to be a bit flamboyant, but uh, I don't mind. I could, uh, he could help me pick out clothes. <laughs> he could help anyone pick out clothes and just, man, looks so good together. It's, yeah, definitely smash. Tao Ren, the juggernaut, the unstoppable, except when Juju totally stops him that one time. Master Strategist 
at least when it comes to uh, defense. Uh, close relations to Tsao Tsao. That puts him down a notch. Hmm. Very fun to play, though. But, uh, pass. On the account of, I'm the juggernaut, bitch. I don't know if that is my cup of tea. <laughs> Next up, Sal P. Smash. God, that smash. Just this guy. This guy knows what he wants, and he'll take it. Also, very... At, well, depending on the story, very loyal to uh, his uh, waifu, Zheng Yi. Except that one time when Zheng Yi was outed as a witch and he decided to uh, banish her. So, yeah, definitely smash, but no long-term relationship. The guy is uh, easily swayed by uh, other people. So, uh, do it once and, uh, you know... Stay friends. <laughs> Who else do we have after this? We have Tai Chi Tsa. Uh, the martyr. The martyr that sacrifices himself for a king and country literally takes a bullet for his uh, hometown. Uh, seems like a nice guy, but... Uh, if you want to smash, once again, gotta be quick about it, because this guy acts like he has a death wish. Pass. Lu Mong. <gasps> smash. You already know how I feel about Lu Mong. Do I need to repeat it? No? No? First guy to ever get hit by... Shungo Kusatsu in real life, according to the book. It is described exactly as a Shungo Kusatsu would happen, on account of Guan Yu. Getzelius says, the beard is very smashable. Ah yeah, yeah, definitely. Slim says, Tai Chi Tsu used to be alive, then he took several hours to the knee. He took more than several hours to the knee, he also took several to the chest. <laughs> And his arms. <laughs> One guy. Basically, the Zangief of Dynasty Warriors. He knows how to put on a good bear hug. I'm a little intimidated by that upper body physical strength though. Hmm. Then again, he is very tall. He also has a nice beard. But he's also kind of old. Uh... Mash. <laughs> Jotai? Hmm. Jotai, Eido Master. If you like scars, well, this guy has plenty of them. None on his back, though. He. Yeah, I want to say Smash, because Jotai is the guy that will always, always be there for you. And he'll also come out of it alive for you. Unlike Taishi Tsu, this guy actually lives to see his own celebration. So, uh, Smash. Let's see. Jotai is one of my favorite Dynasty Warriors characters, Slim says. But he seems to be the type to reuse his food seasoning. <laughs> to reu reuse his food seasoning. <laughs> How would that work? Explain. <laughs> like, he cooks the food and then uses the same pan? Or... Taste it, spit it out, and put it back on later food. <laughs> uh, 
That sounds pretty vile. <laughs> we have Ling Tong. He's the guy that uh, Gan Ning killed his dad. And then <laughs> Ling Tong obviously got pretty upset about that. But Sun Chuan convinced them to make amends because Gan Ning actually didn't know that he was killing Ling Tong's dad. To him, it was just another soldier that he fought. He didn't think anything of it. They end up becoming best friends after a lot of trial and tribulations. So he has a big heart, but he also has daddy issues, so uh... Pass. <laughs> I don't think I could deal with all that trauma. Sun Tse, the hothead, little conqueror, who started to take back the Wu Kingdom before he died. Hmm. Also, this is Hakufu from Ikitosen, or Battle Vixens. Same character. He's a reincarnation of him, and based on Hakifu, smash. Yeah. Next guy is Sun Chuan. Sun Chuan is actually probably the ultimate boyfriend in this. He is so loyal, he is willing to sacrifice the whole imperial lineage for the sake of his loved one. When Lian Sha died, his vassals were lining up to suggest somebody else to become the Empress because they didn't approve of the fact that he was gonna marry somebody of a lower standing, even though she was a loyal, uh, a royal bodyguard for Sun Chang Zhang. And he was absolutely enamored with her. But, uh... Even though his vassals came up with one perfect suitor after another, he declined all of them. And instead decreed that I don't want to marry any of these other women because Lian She was the only one for me. And he told them that he wanted them instead of bothering him with these proposals, they should just make Lian She appear in history books as his wife, his empress, and lineage be damned. Slim says, I'd rather scrape off burnt toast and stir that water and drink it than befriend this guy. Well, we disagree then, cause smash, this guy is a romantic. <laughs> also, you've seen how Lian Sho acts around him. He can barely keep it in her pants. The guy has to be mad attractive. Ma Chao. Hmm. Ma Chao is basically Dynasty Warriors Power Ranger. He really hates Cao Cao. Let's see, Slim says, earliest recorded synth in history. EXE says, got a stick. Also, posture check. Lead the horse, <laughs> the horse to water. Okay, okay. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do a quick posture check. Give me a sec. And also have some water. Or in this case, uh, what I have, let's see here, this is uh, just Pepsi Max. Do I have, oh wait, wait, wait. I have something special. I have something special. I got a bottle of something called Cuba Cola Licorice. It's a cola bottle with licorice flavor. Slim says, 
I am riding into battle with Machal. That's my guy. <laughs> okay. I have a story about this guy, too. So, Machal... Oh, wait. I should have something to bring first. Give me a sec. I will say, Cola and Licorice go surprisingly well together. Then again, I'm a Scandinavian, and we treat Licorice like it's, uh... Uh... What is a good comparison? We have all the Licorice. All of it. <laughs> it's like a national candy. So now that we stretched, let's see here. Ma Chao. Ma Chao hates Tao Tao. Hates Tao Tao. One of the reasons is that when Tao Tao became the Chancellor, he decided he was gonna invite his entire family to the capital to show off how great he was so that his dad would be very impressed with him. On the route there, though, several troops that had been ordered to guard Tao Tao's family, they uh, decided they were gonna kill them instead and take all of their loot. Because the soldiers were forcefully conscripted yellow turbans that Cao Cao had defeated before. He blamed this on the city governor, who happened to be Ma Chao's dad. He had everybody slaughtered in front of Ma Chao's eyes, and Ma Chao has hated that guy ever since. So, points for being, you know, a heroic character because he went on to do a lot of great things despite the tragedy of seeing his wife and his kids and the rest of his family killed in front of him. But he never got over his hatred for Cao Cao. That is a lot of baggage. So, pass. <laughs> Because there is somebody else that's gonna come up later. Oh, we'll get there when we get there. Next character. Wang Zhong. Pass. The guy's like 90 years old. He would turn into dust if you take him to bed. Pass. <laughs> Sub Jub. Emotional damage. First comment from the view. <laughs> yeah, emotional damage is just the middle name of Machao. Welcome to Muso Monday. Thank you for tuning in. Next guy is uh, Wei Yan. Uh, this guy is difficult because he has a really bad reputation, and that bad reputation comes from the fact that Zhuge Liang thought this guy was an asshole and wouldn't stop talking shit about him. It didn't help that Wei Yan, in an act of confusion, sort of accidentally betrayed his own people and started fighting them. Which, of course, Zhuge Liang took as Oh yeah, I told you this guy was an unpredictable, unreliable dickhead. So, uh, normally, pass. But... <laughs> the guy initially is quite heroic. Stands up for the little guy and is willing to, uh, hit back, even on his friends. If he sees them do wrong, the fact that Dynasty Warriors gives this guy an IQ decrease every game isn't doing him justice. So, smash. 
Next up, Guan Ping. Hmm. I don't actually know much about Guan Ping because he doesn't stay alive for very long in the story. He's one of the kids that gets captured by Lu Mong, my hero, and executed on the spot because Guan Yu will not abandon his principles even when his uh, kids are in danger. I'm gonna give this one a pass. Pang Tong. Let's see here. Slim says he went from officer defeated to old oh, man dead in like two games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pang Tong. Pang Tong is an interesting figure because he is, as the book describes, Pang Tong is actually extremely unpleasant, extremely ugly or at least repulsive to look at, he's rude, and talks a lot of smack. However, according to the uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel, this guy is extremely talented when it comes to what he actually does. But uh, given his... Um, given both his end, and the fact that one of the things that made people say he's repulsive is that he doesn't bother with shower, cleaning himself, uh, pass. <laughs> the guy has to wear a mask because reasons. Dong Zhuo, pass. <laughs> it's Dong Zhuo. The guy gets off on having people skinned alive when he eats. I don't think anyone would be into that. So, pass. Yuan Shao. Ah, wow, we're getting we're getting a lot of the worst people here. <laughs> 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 well, he is, apparently, yeah. Uh, Yuan Xiao, let's see here. The guy has a lot of money. Lots of money. Uh, he is uh, rich. He's a nobleman. He also is a contrarian in the fact that he, this guy is actually the man that finally puts an end to the Ten Eunuchs. He's the guy that storms into the palace and just murders the shit out of all of them to put an end to their tyranny. He's not all bad. So, let's see here. If we're talking about Yuan Shao from the book, Smash. If we're talking about Yuan Shao the way he's presented in the games, Hard Pass. I'm a bit undecided. <laughs> he really has a strong opening. Slim says, Yuan Shao saying, ah yes, the vagine is divine, the vagine is divine. It seems like something that actually happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I could totally see him saying that. He's also not very vindictive. He comes off as like, Pretty chill, actually, even if he is full of himself. <laughs> he doesn't have bad intentions. Zhang Jiao, the leader of the Yellow Turbans. He is a magician. He was uh, granted magic powers by a mysterious immortal. Uh, that specifically told him that uh, he shouldn't think seditious thoughts. And that is exactly what he did. Which uh, started the Yellow Turban Rebellion and ultimately led to his death despite these uh, newly given superpowers. So, he's a guy that you could tell, don't put your hand in that cookie jar and he'd still do it. Hmm, pass. 
Xiang Yao is just a walking urinary, ur urinary tract infection. <laughs> he has a right hand man that is uh, wouldn't be uh, wouldn't mind. Next, Zen Yi. She is the instigator of the mad month. He is the queen of the red moon. He is the violet empress. She is a very naughty girl. Smash. <laughs> Zen Yi and Sao Pi double smash. Who do I have to kill to take Zen Yi home? Oh yeah. Th have you ever noticed how Zen Yi has a peacock theme going on? It's kind of difficult to tell on this, but uh... Let's see if I can uh... Can you see that ornament on her head? With the feathers? She actually has a peacock theme going on in every game, but sometimes you have to look for it, and I love that. She also uses the death flute, and she's a very nice musician. So, uh, easy smash. Oh, looks like my mouse got stuck. Okay. Subjub says I'm too gay to not say pass on the girls. I totally understand. Zhao Kiao. Does that mean we have Da Kiao next? Uh, let's see here. Pretty cool that- oh yeah, add permitted term, too gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that filter. Saying that you're too gay, it's uh... That's fine, that's fine. Sorry, the bot was a bit... <laughs> yeah, we're getting to the twins. Jacquel was, uh, let's see here, she was... Uh, I think Da Chao was the wife of Zhou Yu, and Jia Chao was the wife of Sun Tzu, I believe. Anyway, uh, she has a fun personality, very bubbly. Also, she's definitely not a minor. Uh, she's just made to uh, appear childish. <laughs> I'm a bit conflicted here. Uh, it's happened before. Uh, quite a few people. Oh no, it's not. It's um, it's the the standard, uh, standard for uh, Twitch. I don't think anyone added that specifically. Those are some big fans. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Zhao Kiao often has. Uh, additional moves in the air that allows her to air dash essentially using those big fans so it's a um, it's a gameplay feature too either way for the child twins i'm gonna say mash on both so there yu ying let me tell you about yu ying <laughs> yu ying is the uh, waifu of zhuge liang the master strategist. Yu Ying's talents include chemistry, astronomy, inventing stuff, and uh, war strategy and uh, fighting. Uh, she is uh, she knows multiple languages. Uh, very 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 intelligent. She also has a mixed heritage, and uh, not, not that that plays any role in this, but I mean, come on, it's Yu Ying, mash. You can also make fun appliances for home, 
uh, for your know, work at home because she built both robot tigers and robot dogs. I'm not sure what that could do for you, but uh, if there wasn't already an automatic vacuum cleaner and a washing machine, or, you know, stuff you would use at home, she would invent the shit out of those, just to make your life and her life a lot easier. Double smash. Slim says, I don't care how... I don't care how unattractive they say she was. She was... She's coming home too. <laughs> yeah. The thing about the uh, Yu Ying being described as the ugly daughter seems to have come from either people saying that she was because mixed heritage or the fact that she was a foreigner or the fact that her dad just made that up and made her wear a veil so that people wouldn't come after her simply because of her stunning looks but rather because they actually cared about her. Meng Huo, the guy that lost to Zhu Liang many 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 times very stubborn pass <laughs> Tai Wen Yi this is uh this is uh the wife of uh Sima Yi the wife of Sima Yi very rare for her to have her own story in uh, Dynasty Warriors. But uh, if she can appreciate a guy like Sima E, Smash. As I already said, Smash on Sima E. <laughs> Outside of that, she was just known to be like very likable and uh, talented. Dachau, Smash, obviously, I already explained why. Uh, also, if you're into uh, if you're into Cao Cao, he would say Smash on both the Chao sisters. He literally built statues in their honor, even though he wasn't married with either of them. But if you know Cao Cao, his favorite his favorite hobby was engaging in NTR. So he did not give a shit. He figured if I could just kidnap them or, you know, take their husbands, uh, kill them or something, I'll, I'll, I'll make this work. Yeah, literally built a tower just for them. Just in case he would get something. But mm. Anyway, awesome characters. Dachau is probably my favorite. As you could probably see, as Sankyu san is uh, directly based on this lady here. Slim says he doesn't deserve someone like her. She's also highly smashable, unlike her sister. <laughs> Here we have Jiang Wei. Jiang Wei is, of course, known as the guy who could not stop invading Wei. What are we gonna do today, Jiang Wei? The same thing we try to do every day. We try to invade the North. He went on... What, eight campaigns that all failed? The guy is stubborn. To a fault. I don't appreciate that. Pass. Next guy. Yashu. Hmm. One of a waste many strategists. His specialty is traps. Uh, also have a fondness for the sickle. Very nice goatee. Not as nice as Tao Tao's though. Mm. Pass. <laughs> Sima Shi, also known as Sima Xiao's bigger brother. Uh, this guy is actually kind of a tyrant. <laughs> Very quick on the sword. Hmm. Yeah, according to the books, this uh, guy is uh, 
A bit too bloodthirsty for my taste. Mm, pass. Very handsome though. Even with his eyeball almost getting gouged by an alleged assassin who tried to one-shot him. Dimashi famously uh, fought well after that, but uh, eventually succumbed to his wounds. However, he kinda had that coming. The guy's an asshole. Sima Zhao. Very, very handsome. Hmm. Kinda reminds me of uh, Warong from Tekken, who's very smashable. Uh, okay, going by the book, going by the book, pass, hard pass. The guy kills his friends because he perceives them to be even a slight threat. Once he overthrows the Wei regime and seizes power for himself, he kills all of his co-conspirators, the guys who actually helped him, because he didn't want them to try to do the same shit to him. So that version of Sima Shao? Pass. This version of Sima Shao? Mash. He's presented as this just all-around good guy pretty boy. Who's nice to the ladies. So yeah. Next up. Deng Ai. Deng Ai was the guy who opposed Jiang Wei. He ends up becoming... he ends up dead because he doesn't realize that even though he's a Wei officer, he's actually fighting on behalf of the Jin Kingdom. He pulls off some very impressive physical feats though, such as climbing an entire mountain just to launch a... a what would you call that? Backstab against the Sioux Kingdom to take them over? Duke Liang fought very highly of this guy. Smash. <laughs> Tough one. Wang Yuan Yi? THE most popular character. People would say that if you wouldn't smash, you are wrong. Some would say, uh... Some would take one look at her and say Big TD Waifu and just say smash. He has kind of poor taste in men, though. Hmm. <laughs> My heart rages around like an ocean in Still, it's Wang Yuan Yi. Ash. Zhong Hui. I like the bravado on this guy. I'm not gonna lie. I like the bravado, the the overwhelming sass and confidence that this guy just oozes. He's kind of a dick, but as a hospando though, I would like somebody like him. Smash. Next up. Jugadam. Jugadam, he um, decides to fight back against the Jin when they were starting to take over. He wanted to live up to his namesake, Jugaliang, his cousin, I believe. 
ends up in a pretty bad spot because of it. Very regal appearance, though. I'm gonna say... Smash. If Zhigliang is not available. <laughs> Yahoo Ba. Uh, let's see, this is the son of Xiao Yuan. Pass. The guy doesn't have a very strong showing. He comes off as... Uh, The guy should have, uh, let's see, ah, S Slim. I think my female character actually married Zhuge Dan in an Empires game. Ah, well, the guy is very attractive. He's just not, he's not the best at reading the room. <laughs> this guy, pass. Guo Hai? Uh, uh, Guo, let's see here, Guo why? The guy would uh, probably fall to pieces if you uh, smash. He probably wouldn't survive the encounter. I don't want to do that to him, so uh, pass. Make sure he actually stays alive. Any partner that he would have would probably uh, be uh, very, very careful. Ding Fong. Isn't he the guy who... Isn't he the guy who they showed... A vat of acid... Suggesting that he would be uh, tortured to death. And he was just super unimpressed, saying that... Uh, Hey, if this is what you're gonna do, just get it over with. I'm not here to waste time looking at your inventive execution methods. I believe he's also a poet? Hmm... Let me, uh... Let me Google this guy. Hmm. Here we go. Was one of the five generals of U. Mm. Pass. Until I, f I, I have to make sure I'm thinking of the right guy. I'm not so sure. Next, Liu Shan, the guy who. Uh, I don't, if you want to say smash on this guy, you're wrong. The guy uses, uh, he actually has a sword in this, but traditionally he uses a table to fight. And while you could definitely smash on that table, the guy's childhood name means a little idiot in Chinese, because this guy was uh, responsible for the fall of the Su Kingdom, his dad's legacy, his mom died because of him, Jia Yun almost got himself killed because of him, Zhuge Liang literally 
stopped court historians from recording anything he said or did because he was a he was a moron. Pass. Jing Kai. She is Zhang Fei's daughter. So her dad, not exactly a paragon. Jing Kai herself, though, with that uh, Legend of Zelda sword and shield Roman gladiator combo. Very, very smashable. I'm not gonna lie. He was uh, the first character I played a lot. Yeah, Smash. Lian Sha, also known as Sun Chuan's wife, uh, waifu. They never actually married. Bodyguard of Sun Chang Zhang, the leading lady of the whole franchise. I mean, I mean, Liang Shu is being treated like the queen she is. Yeah, she is very, very smashable. There's no real argument there. I'm just trying to think of something clever to say, but I'm a bit distracted. So, I'm just gonna, yeah, smash, double smash. Ma Dai, Ma Chao's artistic, artistic, make sure you don't mishear that. Ma Chao's artistic brother, he uses uh, paint to fight enemies, he was an artist. Not so much known for his uh, bravado in the battlefield. That's okay, though. Very fancy outfit. Classy. Smart armor. Mash. Jurong, the wife of uh, Meng Huo, one of the uh, Man tribes, also named after the literal goddess of fire. Definitely some Amazonian vibes going on. She's very tall. If she would have me. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're saying, Slim. Yeah, I would say, I would also say smash, but she she can be picky. She definitely has her she's definitely the type of lady who would pick her own partner. So smash if she's willing. Guan Zuo. The guy who is fictional and also Bao Sanyang's, according to game lore, her husbando. Definitely a Prince Charming face there, though. And I like the. Uh, undershirt he would definitely look better without that uh, tunic I'm gonna say smash if Bao San Yang is part of the deal otherwise I'm too jealous <laughs> and there we have Bao San Yang I love this appearance I like the other ones she had in earlier games, but this one is too good. Ba San Yang. However, if you want to smash, you actually have to abide by a rule she has. 
she specifically has a rule that says only smash if you can actually defeat her in combat. That's a very strict rule she has. She outright says that several times. Like, I will only get with a guy who is good enough to beat me in combat. Slim says, I don't... Didn't know they took the top from her. Pass. <laughs> you like the, the previous one more? Because I like this one more than the one she had in 8. Even though uh, Dinosaur is 8, Bao San Yang is definitely smashable. I love that little round uh, necklace she has. Smash if I can win. Maybe we can play a match of Tekken or something. The yo-yo. Ah. <laughs> this is a better appearance for sure. Ah, yes, yes. I also like that she does uh, Monkey Kung Fu. That's adorable. She has super fun moves with that. So, uh, yeah. Double smash. Pong Da. This is the guy that was forced to join uh, the Wei Empire. He used to be friends with Ma Chao. The guy wasn't a traitor, though. He was forced. He kinda had to make do with what he had, and in order to show his loyalty to the Wei Empire and stop people talking shit behind his back, he built a whole casket when he was going to war to take back the uh, castle that uh, Guan Yu had taken over, and he said, Tona Becky is now following. Wow, you immediately went on with that uh, giveaway. Welcome to the stream. Uh, how are you? Uh, what, what is your relationship with the Dynasty Warriors series? We're uh, a little over halfway into the list. I was just talking about Pong Da. I think his story is uh, one of the most fun or tragic. But yeah, to prove his loyalty to the Wei Empire, he decided to build a whole casket. So when they went to fight Guan Yu at Fan Castle, he told everybody that, okay, I have a casket, and I am absolutely loyal to the Wei Empire, and I don't appreciate you guys talking shit behind my back, so I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna carry this casket on my back into battle and I swear that either Guan Yu comes back dead in this casket or my troops will come back with me in the same casket. That is how this battle is gonna go. I'm either gonna go out there and take the head of Guan Yu, the god of war, or I swear I'm gonna die trying. The guy was dedicated. Convicted. Smash. Definitely. That loyalty you cannot buy. Slim says, a tisket, a tasket, put a whole man in this casket. <laughs> Ah, ah yes, here we are, finally. The reason why we wouldn't smash Machao. Because Machao did to her what Cao Cao did to him. He killed her entire family, just like Cao Cao had killed his entire family. Wang Yi is a, one of the few female officers outside of Guan Yinping that we know for a fact was out there in battle because she wouldn't let anyone other than her hunt down and kill Ma Chao. She actually rode into battle alongside her husband to get this fucking guy. 
The only person she would allow to get near Machao was her husband, though, because he trusted him to, like, bring Machao in chains. She also seems to have an alcoholic problem. Uh, but I'm, I would still smash. I'm sorry. She seems like a bad influence, tragic character. But, uh... <laughs> Slim says that's a good ass woman. Auto mod. Then you mentioned alcohol. Yeah, it's suggested. <laughs> Me and her would have to talk for sure. The thing is, in Dynasty Warriors 9, she is a, one of the easiest characters to unlock another costume for because all she requires is wine, and wine is very easy to get. The thing is, to get the unlocked costume, you have to give her a hundred of them because she really, really likes wine. <laughs> Guojia, one of the many, many strategists uh, from the Wei Empire. Apparently he likes pool, even though pool wasn't invented back then. Also, sorry about the... what that should have... Please refrain from using foul language. I'm sorry. I actually gave that a pass. But apparently the bot didn't agree. That's weird. That's fine though. Uh, you only got a second of timeout. I'm sorry. The bot, once again, a bit overzealous. <laughs> Good ass woman was what it reacted to. I said, oh, that that's okay. But it was like, no. Let's see here. Goja. Hmm. Smash. Juju. Uh, okay, so according to Juju himself. He is not... He's basically uh, B-tier Zhugliang. His own mom got so disappointed in him when he fell for one of Cao Cao's plots that she killed herself in front of him out of pure disappointment because she thought he was smarter than that. Very tragic. Good looking though, and I like his weapon, it's a fun, he's basically Batman with a grappling hook. Defying Zero, hello, hello, how are you today? Yeah, you're fine, Slim, don't worry about it. Uh, pass, yeah, yeah, pass. He's uh, sketchy. He's not a bad person, but he has a tendency to get himself in trouble. Zuochi. Zuochi. Wizard extraordinaire wears a brush on his head. Very troll. Very good at trolling people. He's an immortal. He has superpowers. He uses his superpowers to troll Cao Cao. I don't think he would smash. He doesn't seem to get off on that. He seems a bit... He seems like the kind of guy who's above smashing. He just... He just, uh... Uses his magic to troll people because he finds it funny. Pass. Also, the raffle is over. 
Hmm. Okay, we'll do the raffle. Might as well. Uh, can I get the code for you guys? Uh, we will, uh, we will go to, uh, the, the screen here while we take care of, you can watch some, uh, Zangle Fighter 2 while I wake up the bot and get you the code for this game. Uh... And also tell, yeah, tell the ball to pick a winner. Let's we'll see here. Uh, the giveaway is for Monster Sanctuary. The indie game. It is a mix of a lot of stuff. Action, indie, adventure, RPG, strategy. It's for Steam. I'm gonna tell the bot to wake up. I can see the bot acting picky again. Yeah. Yeah. I set the I set actually set the bot to the bare minimum. But uh it's still picky. It uses uh, machine learning. Okay, so it's it's actually supposed to allow crude language or salty language, but uh, the bot seems to think that salty language is like everything. <laughs> anyway, we have oh we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of people in the giveaway today, newcomers too. We have Darren Mirshan, as always, a defying zero, a usual culprit. Pretty cool Dan, a longtime supporter. Get Celius, who's often here. Ton Becky, Tona Becky, who's new. And Jet Set Nora, who, uh, oh. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives you 15%-ish chance to win. We're gonna pick a winner. I'm gonna close my eyes and uh, have the bot automatically pick somebody and it's Jet Set Nora. Congratulations! You win the code! Yeah! What's the game on your wish list? Maybe it seems like a good game. I haven't actually played it myself, so uh, let's see here. Where do you want it sent to? Maybe Discord or Twitter? If you want it on Discord, just send me a message there. Or maybe a whisper on Twitter. Uh, what? Which? I'm so used to it being the usual. A whisper on Twitch. Okay, I gotcha. I see your message. There you go. Congratulations once again. What you do with the code is up to you. Let's get back on. Yeah, if you check if you check your uh, messages on Twitch, you should have it. Let's see here. Yue Jin. I'll be perfectly honest. I don't actually know much about this guy, except that he was an early supporter of Cao Cao all the way back to the Yellow Turbans. Got it, thank you. Oh, don't mention it. I have more codes. 
I have more than I know what to do with, and I figured uh, giving them away on stream was, uh, you know, a good way to uh, <laughs> use them up. <laughs> Your gin has a lot of scars. I like that. Smash! Why not? Lidion, the guy he came in with. Don't know much about him either. For the same reason, these two can come as a package deal. It looks pretty sophisticated. Between the two, though. Ass. Next guy. Ah ha 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 ha! It's Lu Su. Lu Su. He is uh. He is uh. The guy that stepped in when uh. Zhou Yu died. He's a gentleman. Very diplomatic. And handsome. He negotiated with uh, Zhuge Liang for a bit. Actually got one up by him. But we can give that a pass because it's Zhuge Liang. You're not gonna have a discussion with this guy and win. Lu Su actually did pretty well considering. Smash. Han Dong. Uh. Han Dong is, uh... Han Dong is the guy who keeps saying that people should notice him. He might be, uh... I feel like he would end up being, like, pretty possessive. Like, you would constantly get... He would constantly ask for your approval, no matter how many times you give it to him. Yeah, no. Pass. Next guy. Guan Jing. Uh, another one of uh, Guan Yu's kids. I forget. Which one is fictional again? One of them dies in the story, the other one is made up. I like the sword though. Hmm. Smash based on appearance alone. I think this guy is not real. Zhang Bao. Uh, Zhang's kid. Oh, wait. If that's Guan Jing, and he's together with Zhang Bao, these are the guys that chased down Zhu Ron and killed him. Between the two, though, hmm. Pass. One Yinping, smash. One Yinping, actual real person. That weapon she has. Unrealistic in size. Apparently, it should be bigger. Does not care a lot about other things, then she might actually be, uh, she might actually be, uh, if there's any character of the ladies who was actually into the ladies, Guan Yinping, definitely, definitely. He once told Sun Jian, when he uh, asked her 
about a marriage and an alliance. It was like, hey, I'm Sun Jian. I'm, uh, you know, the tiger of Jiandong. And you're the daughter of uh, the god of war. We should, uh, you know... Maybe I I'm not going to ask you to hook up, but I do have the three kids here. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, Sun Tzu, he's your age. Uh, you two would be perfect. Our two families are, of course, amazing, both of us. Uh, or maybe you want a little more, uh, somebody with a little more experience than, uh, Sun Chuan. Uh, Sun Chuan, do you, uh, what, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, uh, I mean, they're both very capable boys, and, uh, you would be perfect for them. And her response was, uh, <laughs> are you kidding me? Sun John, why would the daughter of a tiger marry the son of a dog? And that was, that was, uh, the end of it. Sun Jian got pretty offended, but, uh, Guan Yu stepped in and was like, Do you have a problem with my daughter? Because if you do, you have a problem with me. And, uh, Sun Jian had to back off. Be like, okay, okay, I get it, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> so, uh, Guan Yinping. Smash, double smash, triple smash. She is my favorite character as of right now. Jia Shong. Ah, uh, we're getting outside of my territory here. Who is this again? <laughs> Jia Shong. Let me look him up. I feel like... Let's see... Formerly an NPC. He debuted in Dynasty Wars 8. He works for the Sima family. He, they identify him as the shadow to Sima Shao's light. That is a hard pass right there. I don't need to get into detail. If he's the bad version of Sima Shao, holy shit, pass. Okay. Wen Yang. This guy has an entire chapter dedicated to him. Even though he only shows up once, the guy is, uh, he uses an iron whip to, uh, put down a bunch of, uh, bandits, basically. He just shows up, does superhero stuff, and leaves. And as far as I can tell, he doesn't show up in the plot again. So he's a one-shot Superman. Very handsome, though, and he comes off pretty good in the plot. Mash. I'll see what else he can do. <laughs> Zhang Junhua? Uh... Wait, did I? Oh no! This is the lady who is the wife of Sima Yi. The one before was the the wife of Cao Cao. Definitely smash. What is that weapon though? Is that a... Is that a ring? Or a sword? Yeah, smash. Yu Jin. Yet another strategist from Wei Empire. This guy was uh, an OG supporter of Cao Cao. Stuck with him until the very end. The fact that he has such high regard for Cao Cao shows that he is a bad 
person. I really like his style though. And he isn't Cao Cao. Smash. You're on. Smash. This is the guy that uh, set fire to Liu Bei's uh, Darth, Va Darth Vader Liu Bei's army. Amazingly, he doesn't seem to have a bow in this. Yeah, very stylish. This is actually, I would say, this is actually the, the weakest look they gave him. He's usually way more handsome than this. You can't see his uh, jewelry as well. You can sort of see it behind his ear, but he wears uh, earrings and like fancy jewelry. Really, really, really good on setting stuff on fire. He's also another one where smash, but you got to be quick, as he doesn't last. In as in, I don't know how he's in bed, but uh, he does. He doesn't last a long time in the plot. He gets killed in the chapter that introduces him. <laughs> he shows up. He kills like fifty thousand people, and then he's chased down by uh, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei's kids, and he's dead. And uh, that the chapter ends. <laughs> Fa Zhang. Another strategist. I believe he works for both Su and Wei. Pass. The guy's uh, the guy's evil, sinister. Cheng Gong. Oh my God. Cheng Gong. Okay, so Cheng Gong is uh, Lu Bu's strategist. He is uh, Cao Cao's former comrade. He abandoned Cao Cao after he tried to help Cao Cao out, invited him to uh, his friend's place. Fa Zhang is l literally Mr. Steel or Girl, Steel Girl or Boy. Ah, yes. Okay. I need to study up on him, but I know he's a bad guy. <laughs> Thank you for the intel, Getzelius. Chang Gong though, dreamy. Uh, the guy is actually pretty sinister, but but he had a point about Cao Cao being an absolute scumbag. He was there when Cao Cao went on his little accidental murder rampage and abandoned Cao Cao right after. Hooked up with Lu Bu and only lost because Lu Bu is like a wild animal and wouldn't listen to his advice. He also got his high standing because of political ploys that he took to his grave because he cared more about his daughter having a good life and his mom having a good life than his own life. He actually, he actually taunted Cao Cao into killing him so that the rest of his family wouldn't have to suffer because of his defeat. It's a really complex story, but smash! This guy is amazing. Lu Lin Shi, a Lu Bu's daughter. actually existed. Lu Bu tried to use her for uh, a marriage proposal that didn't work out. We don't know why. Maybe she did the same thing that Yin Ping did. Maybe she's into the ladies. We don't know. But uh... Definitely smash. Like, oh my god. Like, 
her dad is known as a wild beast. I mean... Those flies though. <laughs> yeah, smash. Junyu, yet another way strategist. They have so many. Pretty handsome, but as far as uh, way strategists go, he's actually nothing special. He was also a late entry. Debuted in Dynasty Wars 8 Empires. Don't know much about him. Pass. There's, there are better, more handsome way strategists. Sao Chi Shibaha? I don't know how to say this guy's name. Sao Chi How do you pronounce that? You? Sao Chiu? No? Maybe this is the guy that got Guan Yu killed when he allowed Guan Yu to take over Fan Castle. Is that him? Because if he if that's him, then uh, bonus points for that. Aha, he did have a part in that. Smash. Smash. He got Zhang Pei killed. Ah, smash. Okay. Man Chong. Ah, oh, we're getting into uh, territory. <laughs> Man Chong. Who is this? I'm looking. He is best known for defending the city of Hefei from a series of invasions by Wei's rival state, Eastern Wu. Pass, for the same reason as the last guy. Jun Yu. Pretty scruffy looking. Us. Cheng Pu, the elite veteran of the Wu Empire. He's got this uh, Sean Connery look to him. Probably knows his way around too. Smash. Zhu Zhong? Yeah, we're getting into uh what is this? have a whole lot to say about him. He was one of the walls that Wu had against uh, Wei. Late, late game. Smash. But only if there's nobody better available. Wu has a lot of smashable people, this guy's. Sure looks handsome, but uh... Zhou Zhang. This guy was a former Yellow Turban officer. Quickest man in all the kingdoms. That is not a Magniker you want for a uh, smash or pass. So, pass. The guy's uh, 
known for being super fast in everything. Jin Zhang Jing. Okay, so this lady is pretty amazing. Like, just story-wise. Appearance-wise, it doesn't even matter. She's pretty amazing. She was a lady of the, uh, a lady of the, uh, an, uh, a noble lady who lived in Wei when the Jin Kingdom was trying to take over. However, when the Jin Kingdom took over, she and her whole family was spared because he was such an excellent diplomat that even though he was part of the noble family of the kingdom that they had just taken over and started eradicating from the top down, he was spared because she was so fucking popular, so fucking charming, and so fucking smart that they just couldn't do it. They were like, you are... If we kill you, there's gonna be a fucking rebellion. Like, we we just can't. We just can't. You're too good at this. Everybody loves you. Everybody thinks you're amazing. And if we, uh, if we make an example out of you, the people will rise up again and we'll have to do put down another rebellion. That is just not okay. Uh, she also wasn't forced into marriage with anyone as far as I know. So yeah, this uh, she's like you can even look away at the screen look away from the screen. Jin Jan Ying is a grade A top tier material waifu. And that's not based on her looks. <laughs> Smash! Yuan Shu? Uh, pass. The guy literally dies and is known for his inability to read a room. His inability to read a room is so bad, it's a giant plot point. He dies because of it. <laughs> pass. Xiaohoji? Let's see, Xia Hoji. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Zhang Fei's wife. Uh, she was kidnapped by him as a little girl and uh, forced to be his wife. I would say Smash, but I'd rather rescue her from him. Uh, yeah. Dong Bai. Oh my god. Dong Bai. Okay, uh, Dong Bai is Dong Zhuo's granddaughter. She's the only person who canonically actually likes Dong Zhuo. Because he thinks of her as his little jewel. He spoils her, he treats her well, he gives her, uh, you know, nice, nice clothes, presents, keeps her fed. All of that. So of course you would like him. He was uh, the nicest guy in the world. In Dynasty Wars 9, she has a sadistic streak. She's a dominatrix who really enjoys making people uh, surrender to her and uh, act as her pets. <laughs> so... Uh, if you're into that sort of thing, uh, you know, if you're a masochist, then uh, he's into uh, being the dominatrix. So, uh, smash. Definitely smash. You can put that chain around my neck any day. Last character, Hua Zhong. Hua Zhong is the, or at least I think this is the last character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Hua Zhong. This guy is, uh... I would say pass, because the way this guy is introduced is he attacks 
or wait, let me let me actually give him an introduction. Hua Zhong is the the guy that car that guards Shishui Gate. Shishui Gate is the gate that leads to Hulao Gate, which leads to the capital where Dong Zhuo holds up. Uh, Hua Zhong likes playing golf and baseball, uh, preferably with other people's heads. Uh, that's a big thing. Uh, he is introduced attacking Zun Jian in the book, The Tiger of Jiandong. Zun Jian survives the encounter because one of his officers gets in the way of Hua Zhong's first attack, which is literally a clap. Like, he just claps the guy. Claps the guy with his giant hand so hard the guy flies into a tree and fucking explodes into a red paste. That is how this guy is introduced. He just shows up, attacks. Sun Jian's officer tries to get between him and Hua Zhong. Succe succeeds in doing so. Gets clapped into red dust. Pass. Because, uh... Damn. I mean, the finger strength? Jesus Christ, this guy could probably crush a rock with his fingertips. But, uh... You want to survive the encounter. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, that covers the whole list. Uh, so, how do you guys like that? Do you have any of your own suggestions? Uh, let's see, how are we doing on time? We do have time for some actual gameplay. But before that, we're gonna take a quick break and I will be right with you. I'm in a 
Okay, chat. We are back. We still have time to do uh, a round or two of uh, this official randomizer where they will uh, put up random teams in random territories with random characters. We are currently part of the uh, Lulin Shi Kingdom. She's up there on the throne. We're supposed to do... We're supposed to procure rations, and we're supposed to do bribery. Going Hu's vagrant force has been wiped out by Liu Bong. Oh my god, Liu Bong is part of the campaign. Here we have the magistrate, uh, Lu Lin Chi. We are, this is the second part of the randomizer. We have joined this kingdom. We have a couple of uh, big names here. Uh, San Kyu San is on the left in the middle. Or the far left. In front of her is Guan Yin Ping. On the right side, we have Cao Cao, and behind him is um, one of the many kings of the Nan Man tribes. We are currently trying to raise provisions. And we're trying to invade. Let's see. Send a bribe to an officer of another kingdom. Oh yeah, we did try that. We managed to get Athena. She's on the team. We don't have time to do bribes, I don't think. Also, nobody else is working. Hmm, okay, let's try bribery then. See who we have. Sixty one percent. I like those odds. Wolf Crown. You might remember her from a certain sword of fighting game. Apparently she's into taking bribes. Oh no. Zelda is leaving us. Your companionship with Zelda has decreased. She's a good she's a good girl, so she doesn't like it when we go out and buy the people. Okay, we got the first battle coming up. Oh, thank you for the confidence. We're gonna have to do with this. I'm gonna have to do with this. Okay, thank you, Sam. 
Dao Cao, Yin Ping, Yun Yu against one guy, Sun Ben, Han Yao, Yin Qi, Liu Ping. Okay, so all of us have more troops than they do, but there's fewer of us. <laughs> Hmm. Here we have some suggestions. Summon Hailstorm, summon Lightning Bear. I believe Summon Hailstorm was the one that got us through before. I'm so mad we never get more of Army of One. It's still at one star. It's uh, probably the best strategy that we have. If you have not played uh, Dynasty Warriors Nine Empires before, the rules are pretty simple. There's a triage right down there on the left. Archers beat... Archers beat swordmen. Swordmen beat horses. Horses beat archers. And... Uh, the goal of this battle is to make it inside of the castle. You can you do that by several means. You can uh, knock the uh, w you can knock open the gates with a with a battering ram, or you can use one of the siege towers to climb the wall. Either way, once you're inside and you open up the door, either from the inside or the outside. You can uh, then summon the boss. If you win, you uh, win the fight. If you run out of time, you lose. Or if you run out of troops and die, you also lose. So, uh, considering they have more officers, we're gonna try to uh, make use of the fact that our officers are stronger than theirs. Let's see if we can... Uh, Balance the audio a little. See if I can. So the way this uh, game works is that you have uh, really just four buttons. 
jump. Super. The Muso button. Quick attack. Heavy attack. And then if you hold down R1, you have all of these options as well. Stun. Disease opponents. Uh, knockdown, knocks them down. You have uh, launch and special. Launch just launches. Special is uh, mini super. And combining the various special moves will allow you to string together combos. We have executed a secret plan, which means now there's going to be a hailstorm, which changes the weather, and it's going to be this weather, which gives them uh, debuffs. We also want to stop their plan to build a ballista by taking over these territories. We might want to send one someone to do that. Ah, she's already attacking. That's good. And taking over a base is as simple as bringing this number down to zero. Uh oh.
I just realized maybe we should switch the category to the actual game we're playing. Let me fix that. this some more. And we control basically the whole map now, so this is uh, this battle is over. can just stand here. Not not much else to do. There we go. Even control the catapult inside the castle. We haven't even been there yet. Because the hailstorm is beating him. And now even this is ours.
elite guard. And that's that. Man, that was an easy battle. Feels good after we lost like twice in a row last time. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> easy win, yeah. this greater army coordination temporarily nullify own army affinity uh sunben is that like dynasty spider-man's uncle han yao And she. Okay, he's the only one who joined. Beaten one one's kingdom and gained control over Xia Pi. I think was that the one they took from us last time? Because we definitely lost territory down there. Anyway, let's see what uh, Lulin Chi has in store for us today. Oh, it's the Emperor. Oh, she became the Prime Minister. Moving up in the world. <laughs> We have a new general, Lubu. We still don't have a strategist, even though it's literally in my name, but uh, okay. Recommend people during a stroll, send a bribe to an officer of another kingdom, upgrade defense. Yeah, we're gonna suggest something different. Ah, the goal for money is pretty high, but otherwise, hmm? let's see. We could definitely need more uh, recruitment, but... Let's 
to think a bit about this. Upgrade defense if nobody else is gonna do it. Then I'm gonna do my territory. <laughs> Sonic is leaving us. Oh no. Sonic the Hare left the forces out of dissatisfaction. Going to Dong Chao forces, okay. Her face being invaded. Tata wishes to meet with us, but we're being invaded. This is not my territory, but uh, oh. Oh my god, Twitch is gonna be in this battle? Oh, Zelda is also gonna be in this battle, huh? Okay. Fire attack. Let's see, capture the enemy base, then have the engineer set the base ablaze with a fire attack. Damages enemies inside the base with a fire attack. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. We have so many officers compared to them that this should be relatively easy as long as we pull off the, uh, the fire attack. <laughs> Okay, let's get to it. First, we're gonna stop this thing. Okay, what's important to remember here is that we have three officers that are meant to go inside bases and destroy them. But there's also gonna come a couple of uh, assault troops or assassins or whatever that we need to pick off. Otherwise it will fail. We're gonna need to keep a lookout for them. Ah, there they are. Let's see who we can get to the quickest. We can eliminate this guy right away. That's an assault captain. Okay, that guy has been dealt with. There's two more. And here's one more somewhere. There we go. Now we just need to take the bases. One. Oh, this map is weird. Yeah, 
らに格の違いを思い知らせるのだ。And the music's changed on beats. The animation. Uh, this bandit is almost dead. And he's dead. And in this defensive battle, all you have to do is keep them out of your castle and try to capture their main camp, which is the one we're heading to now. So that's it.
Oh yeah, he was the guy we were unsure about before. <laughs> no smash. It looks dirty. <laughs> Secret plan. Ill secret plan gauge for plans not in use. Gonna be another gem that we're not gonna use, I bet. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it was a horse. Okay, where were we before we got so rudely interrupted? to do a stroll as well. Somebody else will have to take care of the money. Let's see what Sauta wants. What, uh, what, is, what is he up to? In this random universe. Sankyo-san is pretty tall. Work together, agree to a company. Yeah, sure. gonna hang out. Okay, let's just hang out with him then. Let's also hang out with the boss. Wanna hang out with the boss? Oh wow, that's such a pretty outfit you have there. I wanna see that up close.
See if I can get a good view. Oh, that's all pretty. Flowers. Love the dress. Looks a bit out of character, but uh, very pretty. Thank you, Zan doesn't have armor. <laughs> this is her everyday outfit. Also, it's raining? Oh no. Oh, that's all. Blue Boo is there? So, uh, he's gonna let his kid be the ruler. And direct. <laughs> oh, so you get actual cutscenes if you actually bother to go there. Huh. See who else is there. We can hang out with Athena. Let's fast travel to, uh... Oh, wait, uh... Let's try this, then. This could be an effective way to uh, make friends. We have Athena from Psycho Soldier. There she, uh, is. She got offered a certain blue-maned uh, tigress in exchange for her uh, services. She could not bear to say no. We're gonna hang out in the rain. And here we have Leon Sha. Why, why did Athena get the princess laugh, though? <laughs> Is this like a dark version? Anyway, that made her happy. Uh, we're gonna have to finish our stroll. You have my permission, she says. Shia Yuan, the master archer. Guan Yin Ping wants to hang out. Like Guan Yin Ping is the best girl. He wasn't in the timeline when we played this last time, so he couldn't hang out. So let's see what she wants. Wan Yinping wants to ask us how we train. Uh, okay. Uh, do you know what a bicycle is? Or hasn't that been invented yet? That's how we train. I'll uh, show you. Hmm, do we have... Yeah, we have Zelda. Okay, she got pissed by something we did. Oh, it was when we sent briberies, which made us more evil, and Zelda doesn't appreciate 
evil people, so we gotta make amends. Otherwise, he's just gonna leave. <laughs> Zelda, the heroine of time. Let's interact. Went from D to C. Doesn't hate us anymore. Let's see who else. Um, let's hang out with. Mm. Let's hang out with the evil Twitch. I want to see what he looks like in the actual game. Let's ho head over to Twitch. Are you watching Twitch? This is a character I made. You know why. <laughs> Here's the specialties. Great conscription. Sure you know what that means. Now let's see. There he is. Oh, here we have Panda-chan. Yeah. Meet the great villain, Twitch. He's not as tall as I try to make him. Let's see what he wants to do. Wang Siva. Ziva. Minister. Ah, come on. <laughs> Ah, did I increase my level with you, Twitch? How do you do like that? You wanna highlight? <laughs> we also have Nobunaga Oda. Let's do Panda-chan. Let's relax a little, there's no fighting to be done. Oh wait, she was standing right there. He's adorable, don't you think? He's so adorable. So adorable. Aww. Panda Chan. <laughs> yeah, let's continue flirting with Yin Ping. Done. Finish stroll. Meanwhile, Yeha Yuan was uh, recruiting people. Nobody is raising money. All they do is raise food. You guys need to get your priorities in order. Another attack. Okay, we're gonna have to wrap things up with another battle and then another battle. Please, we have troops this time. Summon poison fog or ballista construction.
Let's do Poison Fog. Let's be evil. <laughs> or... Yeah, let's, let's try that. Because if we get the Poison Fog to get going... Uh, this battle will be pretty easy. <laughs> Evil genius. The fog plan, yes indeed. Oh, we got some trouble, boy. Still need to take care of the bandits down there. Well, let's let's do that. 
They have all gathered down here. And that's that. Zelda is not going to be happy about that, but we won. Hopefully the boss is happy at least. We have one more battle. What we're going to have to do. Evil. Oh, uh, wind effects. It's um, thrown on health. Ah, that's the one we had. Nice. Okay. So one more battle. Hopefully we win that one too. After that, we will, uh, we're gonna start wrapping things up. Yeah, apparently we have a special event too. <laughs> now everyone knows I'm a genius. Another general, Shinju. Oh wait, we didn't have a battle. Oh. Hmm. Increase rations, that's good. Send bribe, upgrade defense. Oh, she actually went for it. Oh, okay. Because we're running down on food all the time, so we should do agricultural development. And we also need more officers once we have more troops. And gold is good. But, uh, yeah, that's all we have time for, so let me, uh, save. We only made uh, incremental progress today, but we'll be back, of course. 
we're gonna head over here there we go what is next it's their long resort finale possibly i'm not sure let's see here uh let's just go around saying thanks to all the people that showed up very bot always got my back we have Dara Mirshan of course longtime supporter uh, we have uh, pretty cool Dan longtime supporter get Celius who I I did see that you sent me clips I will have a look at them thank you of course we also have uh, Motant who uh, was here for lurk support i appreciate that get set nora congratulations for winning the game sub job thank you for following and uh well i do remember you saying to gain up to to not say pass on girls <laughs> that's fine that's fine Uh, Tona Becky, who immediately went for the giveaway. Sorry you didn't win this time. We'll have another one on Thursday. Every stream we give away a different game. Which one is it next next stream? I don't know. <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> Defying Zero, of course. Long time supporter. And I do believe that's everybody who participated in the chat. So let me find somebody to uh, put a raid on. Hmm. We're gonna do the usual suspect. We're gonna send you guys to uh, Epileptic Gamer. He's super cool. So, uh, yeah. You guys could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with us, and we appreciate that. And furthermore, Putin needs to back the fuck off Ukraine, and I'll keep saying that until he actually does. Somebody needs to kick his ass and he needs to realize what a horrible, horrible curse he has brought upon the world. But yeah, I will see you guys on Thursday, perhaps. Otherwise, Muso Monday is always available. Uh, you guys take care and say hi. Later. Oh, I forgot Slim, because, yeah, Slim, thank you for tuning in.